comprehensive means what? The summarized information of the testing is done in the form of the functionality test. We can reuse the existing code for many other projects which is similar to the one which is already developed. Then upgrade or downgrade. Suppose if any new features are incorporated into it, that is scalable options are incorporated into it, that has to be upgraded to the successful operational state of the system. Hello and warm welcome to One and All. It is Dr. Ravi Kumar YB, Department of Computer Science, Vidyashram, First Grade College, Mysuru, the Temple of Excellence. In today's session, you will be given the information about the testing, the different types of testing, which is there in your unit four of your syllabus. That is, the taxonomy of the system testing in, includes the basic type of tests, that is the functionality test, robustness test, interoperability test, performance test, scalability test, stress test, load and stability test, regression test, documentation test, regulatory test. Under regulatory test, we have software safety and software assurance. All these are different types of tests. Let me explain each of these tests one by one. The first one is basic test. The basic test is indicated in this pictorial representation, that is, which includes the documentation and regulatory. This is the last test. Under this regulatory, you will come across the software safety and software assurance. So if that is the case, we have mentioned all these, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So totally 12 type of tests are performed before that software is delivered to the customer or to the stakeholder. If that is the case, let me explain the basic tests, that is the very first one, that is basic test. The basic tests provide an evidence that the system can be installed, configured and brought to an operational state. What does this mean? We can ensure that the system works properly according to the requirements of a stakeholder. That is ensured by installing configuring and brought and bringing it to the operational state. That means till it is delivered to the client or to the stakeholder, it is called as the basic type of tests. In this we have the functionality test. What is the meaning of functionality test? We have different types of modules there. That means these functionality test provides comprehensive test over the full range of requirements within the capability of the systems. That means comprehensive means what? The summarized information of the testing is done in the form of the functionality test. Then robustness test. What is the meaning of robustness here? It has to be efficient, good enough to work in different environments. That is, it determines how well the system recovers from various input errors and other failure situations. In spite of having certain type of errors in it, it has to raise an exception to the user that this is what the mistake committed by the user so that the user can rectify the mistake which is done in that and it can properly give input to the system and it can produce an output out of this system. That is called as a robustness test. Fourth one, interoperability test. Suppose I have developed the system in Windows environment, the same software must also work on Unix operating system environment. So interoperability is very, very important. Tests determine whether the system can interoperate with other third party products. That means the third party product may be a licensed version of the software. 
that has to be associated with the software product so that it works efficiently in the stakeholders system very well. That is called as an interoperability test. Next we have performance test. What is the meaning of performance test? What is the amount of time taken by the system to respond to the user's input? That is, it is a measure of the performance characteristic of the system. Example, throughput, the number of inputs given at per unit time. What is the response time? That is, the time taken to produce an output from the time the input is given to the system and under various conditions. That is called as a performance test. Then scalability test. We can reuse the existing code for many other projects which is similar to the one which is already developed. And we can add few more functionality to it. That is called as scalability. That is determines the scaling limits of the system in terms of user scaling, geographic scaling and resource scaling. That is called as the scalability test. Then we have stress test. Stress test put a system under stress in order to determine the limitations of the system and when it fails to determine the manner in which the failure occurs. That means stress test includes the stress in order to determine the limitations of the system. What is the meaning of limitations here? Suppose if the input given to the software has certain limitations, for example, the precise value which is entered into the text box that it can tolerate up to the precise value which is going to be entered into the text box. If it exceeds the length of the precise or the precision value which is specified by the, by the developer, then it has to raise an exception to the user that this is the limitations specified by the system. If it crosses that limit, it has to be informed to the user that the mistake of the input given to the system. Load and stability test. The load and stability test provide evidence that the system remains stable for a long period of time under full load. That means even when the system is working with full optimized information, it has to be in stable condition for a longer period of time. That is called as a load and stability test. What is the meaning of reliability test? The reliability test measures the ability of the system to keep operating for a longer period of time without moving on to the failure state. That means, let me take up the example of operating system. When there is a chances of deadlock, when there is a chance of deadlock, the system must detect the deadlock which may occur in future and it has to come out of that deadlock and it has to remain in the safe sequence. So in order to become a reliable software, it has to be reliable enough to work for a longer period of time without developing any failures or without leading to any failures of the software. Then we have regression tests. These regression tests determine that the system remains in stable as it cycles through the integration of other subsystems and through maintenance, maintenance tasks. That is called as the regression test. Then we have documentation test. What is the meaning of documentation test? Again, it ensures that the documentations of the user requirements are met with the developer, are collected and the accurate guidelines are given to the to the stakeholder who uses the system that is called as the documentation test. You will come across the basic type of test that is the basic type of tests can be further classified into the booting test, then upgrade or downgrade test, then light emitting diode, diagnostic command line interface. These are the type of basic tests that are carried out under the basic tests. The boot test includes the designed to, they are designed to verify that the system can boot up its software image from the supported boot options. That means if there is any failure that occurs during the time of execution of software, it has to restart the software immediately when it is failed to operate. That is called as booting options. 
then upgrade or downgrade suppose if any new features are incorporated into it that is scalable options are incorporated into it that has to be upgraded to the successful operational state of the system or else it has to be downgraded to the state which was earlier which was running properly that is called as a downgraded state that means tests are designed to verify that the system software can be upgraded or downgraded downgraded that is roll back in a graceful manner the same thing as i told right now then light emitting diode that means what the led tests are designed to verify that the system led state indicators are functioning according to the desired this is a case study test used here then we have a diagnostic test whether everything is working properly or not is checked with an automated operations that is called as a diagnostic test these are designed to verify that the hardware components or software components which includes modules of the system are functioning according to the desired options that is power power on self test that is automated options ethernet loopback test bit error test all these are certain types of diagnostic tests that is carried out automatically it has to perform in its own in times of failure of the software in the process of operational then command line interface the command line interface includes the commands that means command line interface in short i will call it as cli these tests are designed to verify that the system can be configured in the form of commands by giving certain commands to the system we can do it so for example if i take up the unix operating system or linux operating system most of the information or interfaces with the system are done in the form of a commands so by giving commands to the system it has to rectify and work according to the requirements of a client that is called as the command line interface then we have functionality test under functionality test we have different types of tests that is communication systems modules logging and tracing element management systems management information base graphical user interface security and feature these are all the sub systems or sub tests under this functionality test the first one is communication test what is the meaning of communication test let me tell you that these tests are designed to verify that the implementation of the communication systems are specified in the customer requirement specification that means in the customer requirement specify specification it has to be specified that the communication operations incorporated into the hardware devices is working according to the principles which is specified by the customer that is called as the communication tests for example there are four different types of communication systems are recommended first one basis interconnection tests these tests are done when you use the android mobile phones with network icu that means a network ic is in incorporated into it what is the purpose of having the network ic in the uh, mobile phones that is in the android devices the purpose of having that network ic in mobile phones is to say that it can be connected very effectively so that the messages or any information communication can be done very easily and efficiently without any drop of messages that is called as the communication information the basis interconnection tests capability tests behavior tests and system resolution tests all these are four different types of communication system tests that is done in the android devices especially with network ics then we have module test when we have a smaller sub problems we will design and verify that all the module functions individually as desired within the system as i have already told you in the previous sessions that all the important and big problems are divided into smaller sub problems these smaller sub problems are are approached with sub solutions so that these individual solutions are cross verified that is called as a module test the idea here is to ensure that the individual modules function correctly within the whole system so that when it is integrated that means integration testing is carried out it has to work together with cohesion and coupling operations for example an internet router contains modules such as line cards system controller power supply i told you right now that is 
the network IC which is related to it and fan tray. These tests are designed to verify that each of the functionalities are working according to the requirements. Then logging and tracing. What is the meaning of logging and tracing? That means we are going to test the functionality of the system by logging into the system from a remote machine stating that everything is working according to the requirements of a client that is called as logging and tracing the mistake what has the what is the problem that has occurred in the system is going to be detected with the help of tracing options so we have logging and tracing tests these logging and tracing tests are designed to verify that the configurations and operations of logging and tracing. This also includes verification of flight data recorder, non-volatile flash memory, logs when the system crashes. These are the applications that is flight data recorder, non-volatile flash memory are the applications in which we are going to use the logging and tracing tests. Element management systems tests that is EMS. EMS test verifies that the main functionalities which are to manage, monitor and upgrade the communication system network elements. It includes both EMS client and EMS ser server functionalities. Element management system. This indicates that the, what is the main functionality of a system that has to be identified and the functionality developed for it is working to the requirement of the stakeholder is cross verified that is called as an element management system. Then the functionality test includes management information base in short I will call it as MIB. MIB tests are designed to verify standard MIBs including MIB2 and the enterprise MIB specific to the system that means this is generic system this is a specific system. So these kind of applications can be test can be carried out on only a specific application but it can be applied on to the general applications or to the general systems. Then graphical user interface tests what is the meaning of graphical user interface tests I have already given this information that is the graphical user interfaces like text box button checkbox option button combo box all those are certain types of drag and drop options which are available on the web forms or in the application forms which can be used and designed and verified so that all the requirements of a stakeholders are met in the form of that that is called as a graphical user interface test here designed to look and feel the interface of the users in an application Test, these tests are designed to verify different components such as icons, I told you now, menu bars, dialog box, call bar, scroll bars, list box, radio buttons, also called option buttons. Then the GUI can be utilized to test the functionality behind the interface such as accurate response to the database queries. For example, we have the in the front end, we will be having the graphical user interface. In the back end, we will be having the databases like Oracle and many other things like that. So whether everything which is given from input given from the GUI that is from the front end to the back end is remitting into the database, is committed to the database is going to be verified. All those details are called as GUI checks whether the accurate response to the database queries is working according to the requirement in a specified time that is called as the response time. The tests, the usefulness of the online help that is error messages, tutorials and user manuals and of course we will provide the user manuals to the client or to the stakeholder in case if he commits any mistake while using the software then he has to be prompted with certain error messages or the online help messages must be provided to him that is called as the different types of tests that is under graphical user interface test. Then the functionality test also includes the accessibility test. Suppose if I want to access one of the remote system from my system I can do so with the help of any of the softwares. Let me take one of the software called AnyDesk. AnyDesk is an important software or a team viewer is an another software which helps, which helps me to log in from my system to the remote system which is located at a farthest distance that is called as an accessibility test. That means users can enter, navigate and exit the relative ease. What is the meaning of responsiveness? That means the amount of time taken to respond to the request 
given to the system. That means called users can do what they want, when they want and when it is clear. Efficiency. Can users do what they want to with the minimum number of steps and time? That is called as efficiency. That is the time taken, the number of steps taken or the number of steps initiated to complete the desired task. That is called as an efficiency. Then we have comprehensibility. That means the summarized information of the mistakes or any functionality of a system can be represented to the user or to the stakeholder that is called as the comprehensibility. That is also called as structure with a minimum amount of effort that is called as the comprehensibility. The comprehensibility is also called as the summarized test. Also called as a functionality test. Then security test. What is the meaning of security test here? It provides an authentic information. Suppose if any authentic information is comes is arrived into it, it allows the system to log into the local or to the remote system. So security tests are designed to perform two different types of operations. That is confidentiality and the other one is integrity. Confidentiality includes the secured data. Data must be kept secured and processes to be protected from unauthorized access. That means only authenticated person can log into the system so that we have to give some permissions only to the authenticated person. That is cryptography is another important topic that includes all these authenticity and, un and prevention of unauthorized access is done with the help of the confidentiality. That means integrity. What is the meaning of integrity here? The requirements that data and processes to be protected from the unauthorized modification. Suppose the unknown person wants to do any modifications to the existing system that must not be allowed. That is called as an integrity. Then availability. The system must be made available and protected from the unauthorized persons in the form of denial of service to the unauthorized person. That means we are giving availability of system only to the authenticated person or to the authorized users. Then security test scenarios should include negative scenarios such as misuse and abuse of the software system. The system must not be misused. That is the reason we are providing security test scenarios which includes the different test cases that is test case 1, test case 2, test case 3, so on till test case n that depends on the complexity of the project that is involved. Then the security tests also includes that they verify that only the authorized access to the system are permitted. That means only authenticated permissions, authenticated persons are allowed to log into the system. Then it verifies the correctness of both encryption. I told you that the cryptography in which you will come across encryption and decryption of algorithms for the system where data messages are encoded. Because if it is a plain text, if it is a regular text, any person, an intruder or any unauthorized person who wants to access the data can easily fetch the data item. So we have to encrypt the data. So the cryptography comes into the picture there. In terms of safety, verify that illegal reader of files to which the perpetrator is not authorized is not allowed. The same thing. That is an intruder or a perpetrator are not permitted to use the existing system. So it has to be kept safely from the perpetrators. So we require a safety test. The functionality test also includes that if there is any hackers who wants to introduce some viruses into the system that must not be permitted. Then ensure that the system is available to authorized users when a zero attack occurs, zero day attack occurs. Try to identify any backdoors in the system usually left open by the software developers. What is the meaning of backdoors? Again, it is an unauthorized person, perpetrator or an intruder who wants to log into the system unauthorizedly. So we have to prevent those kind of backdoor people or the intruders who wants to intrude into the system and fetch the details of the system. We have to prevent them. 
in order to prevent them we will go for cryptography types of operations which includes encryption and decryption of data items so that you will not be able to encrypt and decrypt the data which is being transferred from sender to the receiver the feature test which includes the tests are designed to verify any additional functionality which is defined in the requirement specification but not covered in the functional category discussed then the feature test suppose if we, if i consider any of the iterative uh, methodology sdlc during the time of iterative operations any new functionalities needs to be incorporated into it then it can be it can be done so but if it is missed in it then it has to be incorporated again with the help of this testing called feature testing the feature testing will help them to cross verify whether the newly requested requirement is incorporated into the existing system and it is delivered to the stakeholder or not that is done which is called as a feature test example includes data conversion testing and cross functionality testing also called as type casting i will call this as a type casting which is an example of this feature testing so with this i am concluding this session if you have any questions kindly come to the college i will be available to clarify your doubts my dear students kindly come back to me if you have any such questions thank you very much thank you one and all